Well, as Deus Ex bills itself as a first-person shooter RPG hybrid, and we've gone through the first-person mechanics already, we might as well go through the RPG mechanics. Now, there's three components to this. There's your character's skills, there's your augmentations, and there's the actual role-playing element, how you can actually role-play your character as you progress through the story. Now, these are your skills. They each have four levels, untrained, trained, advanced, and master. And you upgrade them using skill points that you earn throughout the game. Now, skill points are acquired in an odd sort of way. You get them for completing objectives. You also get them for exploring areas which means that you can't actually get all the skill points in the game unless you thoroughly explore every single path to your objective, even though it's entirely pointless to do so once you've actually gotten to your objective. I believe the point is that you're supposed to get a certain amount when you go down each path, but the game is so skimpy with skill points anyway that this seems kind of cheap. Now, some mods, notably the shifter mod, uh, add the ability to gain skill points from hurting enemies, uh, killing enemies and such, which I think is a good addition. I do not know why you do not gain skill points from doing various actions that use your skills. Why do you not gain skill points when you successfully pick a lock or hack something with a multi-tool? or hack a computer, or kill an enemy with a various kind of weapon. Why does this not give you skill points? I do not know. You would have to ask the devs, but what it does mean is that skill points are in rather short supply unless you end up being a crafty, stealthy character that goes through all the various ducts and tunnels and such. If you're a combat character, or you simply choose to walk down the main hallway in order to complete your objective in a given area, you're going to miss out on most of the skill points, and you will be quite underleveled. So, let's go through each of these skills and see how well balanced they are and what their function in the game is. Now, the weapon skills for the various gun categories, demolitions, heavy, rifles, pistols, fairly self-explanatory. Each level up increases your accuracy and damage with these weapons, which is pretty critical because unless you upgrade these skills, you won't be able to hit a damn thing, and if you're using a heavy weapon, you won't be able to move faster than a snail, so they're absolutely critical, and you can assign points depending on which weapons categories you prefer to use. Now, the low-tech skill for melee weapons is a bit different, because its usefulness is gimped by the fact that the Dragon's Tooth Sword is so overpowered that it outclasses every other melee weapon in the game and has such high base damage that unless you're planning to do a pure melee build, where all you do is kill things with the Dragon's Tooth Sword, including robots, you don't need the extra damage that comes from higher levels of the low-tech skill. So mastering this skill is essentially pointless, as are, unfortunately, most of the melee weapons in the game. We've got computers. Now, basically all this does is determine how long you can stay in a computer system when you hack it. There is no hacking minigame. So, basically all you do is you just click the hack button up in the corner of the interface, and after a certain amount of time you gain access to the system, and then after a certain amount of time you are kicked out of the system when you are detected. Increasing the skill level not only increases the amount of time that you can stay in the system, but decreases the amount of time it takes for you to hack into it in the first place. On Master, you hack into it virtually instantaneously, and you stay in it for a good minute or so. The issue, of course, is that the interface doesn't actually tell you how much longer you get to stay in a computer system from upgrading the skill. So you have no idea 
whether it's worth the skill points to go all the way to master computers, because it doesn't tell you. Then we have the two uh, access skills, electronics and lockpicks. Electronics basically just means your use of multi-tools. Multi-tools are bullshit. The description of how they work in the game is just technobabble nonsense. Uh, that basically just justifies it being a resource rather than some kind of hacking minigame of some kind. Both lockpicks and multi-tools work the same way. You come up against an electronic panel or a locked door or cabinet or whatever, and it has a lock strength, and each lockpick or multi-tool you have will decrease that strength by a certain percentage, and once the percentage goes down to zero, you hack it or open the door. Of course, the multi-tools and lockpicks are used every time, and you can carry up to 20 of each kind. Now, here is the critical problem with the skill. Just like with the computers, but even more egregiously so, it doesn't tell you by how much each level increases the power of your lockpicks and multi-tools. It doesn't tell you what percentage of a panel strength or lock strength your lockpicks and multi-tools at each level will take off per tool or pick. It does not tell you that it, when you are untrained, they each only do 10%. At trained, they do 25%. At advanced, they do 40%. And at master, they do 75%. Now this is critical, because clearly there is a bigger jump between trained and untrained than there is between trained and advanced. There's a lot of players who would tell you that it's not worth the 3,600 skill points in each category to go from trained to advanced. You can pick or hack anything in four tools or four picks at trained spend your points on something else. But you won't know that because you don't know that you can hack anything with four tools at trained and three tools at advanced. It doesn't tell you this. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present the second most useless skill in the entire game. Now, that name, environmental training, what does that mean? Well, if you think it's going to make you survive better in hostile environments, or possibly improve your physique, uh, you'd be wrong. It has entirely to do with the wearables that you come across in the game. Ballistic armor suits, thermoptic camouflage, and rebreathers. These items are things that you activate. You put on, so to speak, and they have a power supply, and that power supply drains at a particular rate. The higher your environmental training skill, the slower the power supply drains, and thus the longer you get to use these items. But the thing is that they cannot be deactivated. As soon as you activate one of these things, it is on until its power supply is drained, which means it's very easy to waste it if you don't time things properly or you don't know where you're going or what you're doing because perhaps this is the first time you've ever played the game. That means that these things are extremely situational, even if you have played the game before. And in order to get the best use out of this skill and these items, you would have to memorize when it is exactly in the game that you could get the most out of the time that these things are active, because you can't turn them off, and you would have to play the game perfectly to take advantage of these things. And because you have so few of them anyway, there's going to be long stretches of time where you don't have any of these wearable items to actually use, and thus your skill points are still going to waste, even if you're able to take maximum advantage of the time you do have them. Thus, this skill is mostly useless. If these items were perhaps rechargeable, 
and you could deactivate them so that you could keep them with you as they are in a mod like GMDX, then they might actually have some utility. But as it is in the base game, it's just a useless skill point sink. But a first-time player wouldn't know that, would they, until they get into it. And then it's too late, isn't it? The medicine skill. Self-explanatory. It increases the amount of health you get from using a health kit. But again, the description does not tell you by how much it increases the health gain from using a med kit. So again, we have no idea before we actually spend the skill points whether it is worth spending the skill points. Ah, yes. Swimming. Literally the most useless skill in the game. You can get through the entire thing, and you will pretty much never, ever be in any situation where you will feel that you must, or you have to, swim. There's a couple sections in the game where having a few points in it might be a bit useful. The highest I would ever recommend you go is trained. Beyond that, it is utterly pointless because there are three, maximum four times in the entire game where swimming is worthwhile, and luckily the game provides you with handy rebreathers nearby to get past such obstacles so you don't have to really worry about it.